Hi there, my name is Nathalie Gilly and I work for APE, the Association for the Promotion of Renewable Energies in Belgium. I am also the proud coordinator of Energizer, an Intelligent Energy for Europe project that took place from April 2010 to June 2012. Energizer's principle is very simple. We have included renewable energy indicators in the weather forecast. A picture is worth a thousand words. Check it out. Bienvenue dans cette météo des énergies renouvelables. On va voir ce qui s'est passé durant cette semaine, une semaine plutôt agréable, avec, eh bien, vous le voyez au niveau du photovoltaïque, 115% des besoins couverts par votre installation, ce qui signifie que vous avez évidemment couvert l'ensemble de vos besoins électriques, plus le lave-linge du voisin, qui sans nul doute devait être très content. Et puis, regardons aussi cet indicateur au niveau des éoliennes sur l'ensemble de la Belgique y compris les éoliennes offshore, eh bien vous le voyez, 636 000 logements, ce qui correspond plus ou moins au Brabant Wallon et à la province du Luxembourg. Voilà pour ces énergies renouvelables. Back to Brussels. You have just seen the pioneer of the renewable energy weather forecast. We started in 2009 with RTBF, the Belgian television. Then we decided to replicate the concept to Portugal, France, Slovenia and Italy. Energizer was born. But enough about the past. Let's see what these indicators are about. As you can see, there are three of them, one for each technology. Photovoltaic, solar thermal and wind energy. They share one characteristic. They are about the covering of the needs. They are about how the wind and the sun can meet our energy requirements. Both solar technology, photovoltaic and solar thermal, are about the family. They are family scaled. They give us percentage of hot water of electricity needs that were covered thanks to the recent weather. The wind energy is a collective indicator. We take the production of the wind turbines of one country and we see how many households could have been powered by it. That can happen on TV, of course, but not only. Let's see what our Slovene partner, Slovenski eForum, has been up to. Preklopi na solnce. V preteklem tednu bi poprečno slovensko gospodinstvo pokrilo vse svoje potrebe po tople vodi in privrčevalo 7,1 litro kurilnega olja oziroma 6,5 kubičnih metrov zemljskega plina. Sončno elektrarno bi proizvedli več energije, kot jo gospodinstvo potrebuje, kar 158 odstotkov, kar pomeni, da bi je bilo dovolj tudi za večino sosedovih električnih naprav, zmanjkalo bi le za velike in male gospodinske aparate te računalnik. Back to you, Brussels. Preklopi na solnce. Slovenia was thus on the radio, but also in the newspaper, and so are all the members of Energizer Project. The indicators are in mainstream newspapers like Vecher or La Libre Belgique, but also in web papers like Quilivorno. Of course, the specialized press was very keen to the project in Belgium, Portugal, and especially in France, where our partner Espul managed to get reference publications to broadcast Energizer, like in Europe Server, La Maison Positive, and Système Solaire. And that is the strength of Energizer, because we can tailor the indicators for any media. Like in Italy, where Ielp got Quilivorno, Radio Toscana, Rai 3, but also Telegram Ducato on board. Let's see how it looks. Buongiorno e benvenuti a Energy Zero, il meteo delle energie rinnovabili. Passiamo subito al fotovoltaico, vediamo che una famiglia tipo avrebbe potuto risparmiare circa 120 kWh e coprire il 179% del suo fabbisogno, coprendo anche i bisogni del vicino con TV ed elettrodomestici. Passiamo ora al solare termico, vediamo che sempre una famiglia tipo avrebbe potuto coprire il 100% del suo fabbisogno di acqua calda, risparmiando 7 litri di gasolio e 6,3 m3 di gas metano. 
infine l'energia eolica, ecco questa energia avrebbe potuto coprire il fabbisogno di 3 milioni e 130 mila abitazioni pari alle case della eh, regione Sardegna. Bene, con questo direi che è tutto, eh, buonasera a tutti e bye bye Bruxelles! Now you are certainly wondering where the data come from. To answer this question, I have the privilege to introduce Mr. Benjamin Wilkin, our technical coordinator. Hi, Benjamin. Hi, Natalie. So, tell us everything. How do we get those renewable energy indicators? If I understand well, it is based on real systems. Exactly. We monitor real installation, we run models, and we get the energizer indicators for the three technologies. Let me show you how it works. So we get insulation data from the satellites. We put this data in both solar photovoltaic and solar thermal models. On another way, we get real production information from real PV systems and wind turbines. All these data are mixed up in a translation model that gives us daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly data. We provide visual that animated by digital data, available through FTPs, web services, under XML or CSV format, for machines, websites, or even human beings. Wow, okay, so basically, we have the production that is calculated through monitoring and models that use average profiles of consumption to get the covering of the needs thanks to the weather. Yes. Exactly what I said. Okay, very well. That's what happens behind the scenes. Now, once we have this, we still need to get the indicators to the screen. Yes, like Apron did in Portugal. Hello, Catherine. Como habitualmente, à segunda-feira, vamos apresentar o Boletim das Energias Renováveis e tivemos uma semana com muita nebulosidade, mas a nebulosidade foi principalmente durante a manhã, durante a tarde tivemos muito sol e esta radiação solar permitiu com que se abastecesse cerca de 161% das necessidades em eletricidade de uma habitação média na região de Lisboa, com base no sistema fotovoltaico. Em relação às necessidades para aquecimento das águas, também foram cobertas cerca de 100%, também para uma habitação na região de Lisboa. Quanto ao vento, em relação à energia eólica, tivemos um vento que se promoverá por vezes até forte, intenso, principalmente nas regiões do litoral e, e esta situação do vento permitiu com que se abastecesse a eletricidade a cerca de 3 milhões 225 mil habitações. E isto corresponde ao número de habitações, né, por exemplo, nestes seis distritos do, de Portugal, que corresponde a cerca de 56% do país. E foi esta a informação do, das energias renováveis. Voltamos para a semana. Bye bye, Brussels! We have been quite busy during those 27 months. We managed to get energizers indicators in 19 media, including four TV channels, for an audience of 2,5 million people across Belgium, Italy, Slovenia, Portugal, and France, who now have their own national websites automatically updated on a daily basis with indicators, of course, but also historical data and interactive tools to play with. We also train 29 weather anchors who are now our best ambassadors. And we present the concept through 21 conferences to more than 2,000 stakeholders. Now we can broadcast anywhere. Thanks to our rock solid IT structure. Do you like the concept? Others did. Energizer got the European Sustainable Energy Award in June 2012. We also had a special event during the European Sustainable Energy Week. Which is why we have the pleasure to introduce a very special weather forecast featuring the European Commissioner for Energy, Gunther Oettinger. Do you like what you see? You, you can, can have, have it too! too.
on your website thanks to a widget that is automatically updated or in any media that want to collaborate with us. Just contact us. Go to inajazair.eu or directly contact any of our wonderless partners. We will be happy to hear from you. Cheers! Energizer, il meteo delle fonti energetiche rinnovabili. Energizer, in collaborazione con EALP, Agenzia Energetica della provincia di Livorno.